One of the features of Java SE Advanced is Java Mission Control. This facility gives you the ability to monitor, profile, and troubleshoot Java applications. Hi, my name is James Weaver, and I'm a Java Technology Ambassador for Oracle Corporation. I'd like to talk to you today about Java Mission Control. Java Mission Control was built for monitoring, profiling, and, and troubleshooting Java applications and consists of two parts. One is JMX Console, and that's for monitoring in real time. And then J Java Flight Recorder is for collecting data over time. And then also you can have via plugins some optional tools that do heap dump analysis and detrace recording. Here's an architectural diagram. Essentially, Java Mission Control talks to a JMX agent, which has an MBean server that then talks to the built-in VM and instrumentation and app instrumentation built into the JVM. Some fun facts about Flight Recorder is that there's an almost unnoticeable impact on the performance of a Java application. The overhead is usually well below 1%, and that's because the high-performance recording engine is built directly into the runtime. Also, this is very important, that in order to do Flight Recorder, two JVM startup flags have to be enabled in the JVM for which you want to do flight recordings, and here they are. You'll see that in just a second. So let's take Java Mission Control for a spin. We'll invoke it from the command line using the JMC tool that's in the JDK in the bin directory. And that will come up with the welcome screen when you do it the first time. And I'll go ahead and click here to start using Mission Control. And then we're going to go back to the command line and start up an application that we want to monitor. Now because we're going to use Flight Recorder eventually on this, we're going to go ahead and put those command line parameters in there. The name of the program is Load and Deadlock. So now we'll see it show up in the running VMs here. We'll go ahead and start JMX console to be able to see things in real time. So in this overview tab, we have some gauges that show various attributes. And we could swap out these gauges if we want to. We could delete one and then say, instead of showing live set, we could show things like uh, maybe system CPU load. Also, we have some charts down here, and we could add some attributes to the charts. Maybe you want to show committed Java heap. In this tab, we have an MBean browser, so we can see all sorts of attributes that are available with MBeans. For example, if we wanted to look at memory pool, the old gen, and then look at the usage threshold, and maybe even set a new usage threshold, maybe 256 megabytes, we could certainly do that. Then we'll look at triggers. If I want to be alerted when something is out of a range that I set, then I could go ahead and uh, set an alert. Here we'll do CPU usage if it's too high. And we'll say 10% here. And so then it triggered the alert. We could click on it to find out more about the alert. Now I'll go ahead and set that maximum trigger value to something higher so we don't get the alerts. As a matter of fact, Go ahead and turn the alerts off for that particular attribute. Then system, we can see lots of information about the system, and we can even query information here. For example, finding out all of the properties that have the word arch in them. The next tab is memory, and up here there's a heap histogram button, so I can get a heap histogram, and then I could click it again, and then get a delta between them. Also, I could do a manual garbage collection by hitting that garbage collection tab. Now we could see the threads. In this load and deadlock application, uh, there are some deadlocked threads, so we can find out what those are by clicking deadlock detection and then sorting on the deadlocked column. In addition, we could add some columns to the table. We'll add one called lock owner name. That will allow us to then find out who the lock owner is of the deadlock thread. Also, we can click allocation 
to find out how many bytes were allocated to that thread, as well as CPU profiling to find out CPU per usage information about the threads. And then we have some diagnostic commands. For example, if we wanted to print the current thread, we could just click that and click Execute. So now that we've explored some of the things in the JMX console, I'd like to turn our attention to Flight Recorder. So I'm going to close this out, and on the same program, I'm going to right-click and say Start Flight Recording. And for brevity, I'm going to go ahead and just say 10 seconds of flight recording. And we'll, we'll start gathering the information. Flight Recorder gathers the information, and we'll display it. And in that information that, is, that displays, there will be different tab groups. So here's the general tab group that shows those same gauges, as well as CPU usage and heap usage. And we'll see the CPU usage chart here. Also, notice up here, there's a range slider. So maybe I'm not interested in everything in the recording, but maybe just in a certain range that changes the range that the information reflects. There are other tabs down here, tab groups down here, as well as events. And events allow you to do data mining on events that are happening in the application as well as in the virtual machine and operating system. And I can see the events that are logged and get graphs of them and things like that. Now I'd like to walk through some troubleshooting and profiling scenarios using Java Flight Recorder. I've taken the liberty of gathering some flight recording data on a couple of applications. The first one is called Hot Methods. And as you can see in the General tab, the CPU usage is saturated. And so we suspect that it's taking too much time in a particular method. So we could go to the code and find out that we're taking a lot of time in the linked list class. Percentage is 97.3%. We can drill down then and see hot methods. And then we can also examine that using a call tree. And it turns out that we're using a linked list in this application, which has unique values. And so in finding something in the, the linked list, it takes a proportional amount of time. And so we just change that to a hash set and improve the performance. So that's method profiling. Another scenario is latency profiling. So here's another recording from a different application in which we see that it's not CPU bound, but we do suspect that there's some latency going on. So we could go to threads and find out that Yes, we do have, uh, for a one-minute recording, we have 15 minutes of waiting, and the average wait is three seconds. So then we could go into lock instances and find out what's going on, find out there's a lot of threads, but only one monitor instance, and we could take a look at the stack trace and see that we've got a locking problem. So then let's go to events and take a look at a graph of what's happening. And we can see that we indeed do have a locking problem. Let me go ahead and drill in so we can see that more easily. And we can see that these are the, the critical regions, and only one thread is being allowed into a critical region at a time. If I compare that to after it was fixed, I can see that more than one thread at a time is being let into a critical region. I hope you enjoyed this brief demo of Java Mission Control, including how to use Flight Recorder for various profiling scenarios to improve application performance.